Welcome to video 5 on fun with Arduino. In the previous video we wrote the software to control an external LED and simulate a night cycle. Uh, but that was just one LED and well we were going to try figure out how we can have multiple LEDs to, to build for instance street lights or houses that are lit, uh, a station that is lit on our model railway layout. And therefore we need a bit more power. Uh, one of the outputs of, uh, uh, or actually all the outputs of the Arduino can only deliver 20 milliamps and this tiny power supply on board has by far not enough oomph to control or to, to, to burn multiple heavy LEDs. What we need to do is uh, to use an external power supply, uh, maybe even a 12 volt could be best. That can be the same power supply that powers the Arduino itself, that's no problem. Uh, and then uh, to switch the LEDs we use an intermediate uh, module that can either be a relay module or a, fed, a power fed module. Uh, what are these little things? A relay is actually a mechanical switch, but it's in this case controlled by the 5 volt that comes out of the Arduino that controls the coil in the relay. Um, uh, the pluses of a relay are you can switch high voltage even up to uh, your mains outlet, 250 volts, and it can be AC that you can switch. A FET module on the other hand, uh, most of the Arduino FET modules are specified up to 24 volts uh, and it is DC, but they can switch with a very high frequency which can be useful if you want to do LED dimming. Uh, that is the subject of one of the future videos. And also they are completely silent because they are electronic switches, whereas this one is a mechanical switch and it makes an audible click. The prices are, well, very interesting. Uh, you can get plenty of them to do your whole layout. And the relays, by the way, are available also in modules with two or four or eight on one board. Um, okay, how to switch our LEDs? Well, if we have a 5 volt power supply, then yeah, if I want to switch white LEDs, I already lose 3.5 volts over the LED, uh, so I will never have enough to put uh, more than one in series. I have to place them all in parallel. I could do it this way, it might even work, but maybe there can be some brightness variances because of the tolerance differences in the LEDs. And also all the combined current of all these LEDs goes through this one resistor here and the standard quarter watt resistor will probably uh, yeah, get very hot. You might need to buy a special higher power resistor which can be more difficult to find. So why not just do it the easy way and uh, wire them in parallel but each with its own series resistor. That's by far the best way to do it. Well, if we have 12 volts available, then we can uh, make a shift to put a couple of those uh, in series. Three actually, because if we lose 3 volts per LED, then we lose some 9 or 10 or maybe 11 volts over here. Still one or two volts left over the resistor with which we can control the current flow. And the switch, by the way, in all these examples, this uh, switch was the uh, FET or the relay module. So let's now have a look how we can wire them. Oh, by the way, uh, intermediate, uh, the LED strips that you can get on the market uh, often are also wired this way. Three LEDs in series with one resistor per uh, module block, so to speak. Then the wiring, the wiring uh, goes uh, yeah, like this. We have, uh, let's say, a 12 volt uh, DC adapter. And then maybe you can uh, use one of these uh, to, get to, to go to a screw terminal. Then the FET module is actually the easiest to wire because you just feed that 12 volt DC here on these screw terminals. 
and you put your load, you, you complete wiring ends up with two wires that you connect to this screw terminal and then you are all done. The relay module on the other hand needs probably some extra soldering or an extra screw terminal because the switch of the relay is in one of the leads of your load. Uh, it looks uh, easy in this diagram, but usually you will need some extra soldering. Not, not a big deal, it's okay, both of them work fine. On the 5 volt side, they both need uh, the 5 volt that can be uh, to taken from the Arduino itself, because it's a low power 5 volt that they need. And of course you need to connect the output of the Arduino to the input of the switch module. Well, this is it. Let's uh, have a look at this in practice. Let's try this out in practice now. Over here we have a 12 volt power supply and that is connected to the power in terminal of this uh, FET module over here. The output of the FET module is connected to this reel of uh, LED, an LED strip. The Arduino 5 volt and ground, uh, the red and brown wire go to the logic side of the FET module and our pin 8 from the previous video. Uh, the output uh, that is going to control our street lights is to the signal input of the FET. This is my push button connected uh, here to pin 2. Let me press it and well, we should see the same as we had in the previous video. 6 seconds, that time was configurable of course, my uh, FET is uh, switched on. Nothing happened yet because I had not switched on the power supply. Let me do that right now. Uh, we have 12 volts available, street lights on. Yes, oh wow, that is a whole lot of light. The FET module, uh, that is the switch that is uh, capable of switching this higher current. Okay, let's now try the relay module. Actually, the FET module is a bit easier to wire because you connect the power to two terminals and you connect your load to two terminals. While with the relay module, the switch of the relay is in one of the wires. So the power comes in here to this intermediate uh, terminal and the ground wire goes immediately to the LED strip and the 12 volt wire goes to the switch of the relay and then to the LED strip. But never mind, uh, it works. Let's try it out. I press the button now and we have 6 seconds of LED light. Maybe you could hear that click. I don't know, I can uh, try hold the mic close to it and see if you can hear the click. Yeah, a clear audible click with the relay. Personally, I prefer a little bit the FET module because it's soundless and it's cheaper and it's easier to connect. Well, this was it for this video. Maybe see you back in the next one where we are going to write a day and night cycle software.